going to adopt two more children, a boy and a girl. That's us. I'm sure they're going to be just. You hear? He said he wants a boy and a girl. Wait a minute. You mean all that business about them losing their folks? It wasn't an audition. That was their lives they were talking about. He said we're perfect. He wants us. Who? Mr. Cassidy is going to adopt us both. I told her you'd know what to do. Well, honey, it seems to me that the first thing that you've got to do is tell Mr. Hudson the truth. It's easy, you know, to share the fun things. The hard part is to be open about the stuff that hurts. You're right, Dad. I'm glad you're my dad. So am I, honey. So am I. He always knows what to do, doesn't he? Yeah. Any more problems today? No, sir. That'll do it. Thanks, Dad. Now that we've gotten that problem taken care of, what do you say we all go down to Scoops for a Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of gonna have? I want a huh? chocolate. Mm -hmm. A chocolate? Mm -hmm. A double chocolate malt. Oh, yeah. How was your visit with Sarah this morning? I think she's beginning to feel a little more comfortable with us. At least I hope so. The only problem is the only thing she ever talks about is her little friend, Joey. What are you doing? Just pretending. Pretending what? Just try and imagine what it'd be like to have a dad like Mr. Cassidy. Don't forget to join us next week for another story with America's favorite father, Bill Cassidy Jr. in That's Our Dad. Help you? Yeah, we'd like to see Mr. Cassidy. Right. And you and everybody else with the $2 map of Beverly Hills. Now, if you'll just turn this thing around. My name's Jonathan Smith. This is Mark Gordon. We have an appointment. Oh. Yes, here you are right here. Uh, sorry, sir. Just hang on. I'll get the gate. Thank you.
built. Okay, everybody, let's get together. Let's see if we can make this. Byron, if I find so much as one nail hole in this house, I'm gonna send the bill to you. Relax, relax. The boys promised me they'd take good care of everything. Cut, 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 cut. Gordy, I told you to fix the sleeves on this thing. What do you want me to look like Charlie Chaplin? We'll, fix we'll, we'll get something else. Look, we got backups for everything. Get the brown tweed. The brown tweed. tweed. Now, that looks real great on you. Now, come on. This is what I got in mind. We'll take the kids, we'll put one of them in your lap, get some pictures, and all go. Cassidy? Did you say Cassidy? What's his first name? Bill. Bill Cassidy? He's our assignment? Yeah, he's our assignment. What, what's the job? Now we're gonna hook up a security system for Security him. system? I don't know anything about security system. Well, relax. I'm not asking you to be a brain surgeon. No. Hi. Uh, this is great. You look terrific. That's great. Oh, get that, get that, get that. That's great. Okay, got it? Wonderful. Number two, number two. Okay, great. Right. Lindsay, you look gorgeous. You look gorgeous, sweetheart. Number two, number two. That's great. That's great. Bill, that's terrific. Okay, number three, number three. Bill, you look fine, fine. Just keep smiling, smiling. That's great. You got that one? Good. Go to number four. Number four. Oh, that looks... I love it! I love it! I love it! Okay, sweetie, I don't need you anymore. You go to that. Guess what? Bill, I got a great idea for this shot. Pick Martin up in your arms. They'll love it. They'll love it. All right, come on. Give me a break. Why? What's the matter? Well, what's the matter? You used to be cute and cuddly. That's what's the matter. Do it. Do it. They'll love it. Let Trust me. Trust me. Oh, you look great. Great. You ought to stay away from the jelly donuts on the set, kid. You're no Slim Jim yourself, pal. You know, it's really nice to see a guy who does a TV show the whole family can watch. You know, without car chases, uh, guns going off, people taking dope. I know what you mean. Now, this guy, he talks about the way people feel about things, or the way they treat each other, or should anyway. You know, I really admire that. Byron! Who are these two? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Cassidy. I, I'm Jonathan Smith. This is Mark Gordon. We're supposed to check over your place for a new security system. Oh, yeah. All right. Look, uh, I want you to look over the setup at the studio, too, so it's probably going to take you a couple days. You use the, uh, the guest house over here while you're here. Yes, sir. Hey! Better not turn out to be from the National Enquirer. Must be having a tough day. Yeah, I suppose. What happened? I've been adopted. My potters. I asked Miss Santana if there is a way we could stay together. But I guess they don't want two kids, Yeah. It's gonna be okay. You shouldn't give up so easily. We'll figure out something. I don't want to go without you, Joey. Yeah, I know. There's a way we could stay together. Someone must know the answer. But who? So what you got there? Uh, six eight. Six eight. And a half. And a half. And three little marks. Oh, come on. It was a great run through. Bill, it was great. All we got to do is trim the restaurant bit with the grill and we'll be fine. Earl, knock it off. This is me. Remember, the whole thing is garbage. And then, now, Bill, wait a second. It's, it's not garbage. Now, this is going to tighten up real good. It's, it's only Tuesday. Tighten up? This thing stinks. Lock City. You know what I mean? Oh, and Earl, I want you to tell Lindsay the next time she better know the words or she will find herself on the next sampan back home. Smith, how's it going? All right, you got a lot of ground to cover here. Yeah, just remember, I want a system so tight that a greased flea could not get in here without an invitation, okay? You got it. Now... Oh, swell. What's the matter? I could have sworn. 
The new pages were the notes for the new scene. I must have left them at the studio. Myron, you're going to have to go back and, and pick them up. Oh, oh, no, no, wait a minute, Bill. It, it, it's almost 8 o'clock. I, I promised my wife I'd take her out to dinner. Myron, in this business, you shouldn't make promises. Uh, Mr. Cassidy, we'd be happy to get them for you. You wouldn't mind? Not at all. I appreciate that. They're on the breakfast table in the kitchen set of blue pages with some notes written on them. I'll call security and tell them you're on the way. All right, we'll head out right now. Garbage. You know, you're really gonna let that Myron, what's his name, do this. Uh, no, I couldn't. He wouldn't have found the pages. How do you know? Because I've already got them. I don't understand this. If you already got them, then why are we going to the studio? To meet somebody. Oh, that makes sense. It's little and it looks on TV, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder where everybody is. How about they all went out for dinner and the movies? He always takes his kids to the movies. I'm hungry. Let's see what they've got. We can't take any of his stuff without asking. He wouldn't mind if we just had some peanut butter, would he? Hey, look at this. I don't like cauliflower. It's made out of rubber. You guys looking for something to eat? Uh, yeah, but we figured Mr. Cassidy wouldn't mind, and, uh, we didn't take anything. Honest. Hey, it's okay. You don't have to be afraid. The kids have names? I'm Smith. She's Jones. Smith and Jones. Huh? Well, my friend's name is Smith. Maybe you two are related. I don't have any relatives. How'd you get in here, son? Well, we sort of walked in. Where is everybody? That was late. Everybody went home. But this is home. We need to see Mr. Cassidy. Well, what do you need? An autograph? Something like that? No, we need to ask him how we should handle something. Don't you think your folks are going to worry about where you are? Oh, we are having... We're not talking till we see Mr. Cassidy. Oh, you're not, huh? Well, if you're not going to talk, you might as well eat, huh? There's nothing in the fridge. We look. Ah, uh, sure there is. Uh, I'm save some you. peanut butter. There, put some honey on it. That's delicious. Ooh, nothing better than a little ice cold milk. How'd you do that? There's nothing in the fridge except rubber cauliflower. Well, to be honest with you, I'm an angel. Sure. When will Mr. Cassidy get back? He's not coming back. He only works here. But we have to see him. I'm afraid it's going to have to be some other time. Why don't you make some sandwiches, then I'll take you back to Oak Hill. How'd you know about Oak Hill? I just told you. I'm an angel. Well, they're safe and sound in bed. We were so worried about it. Why do you suppose they ran away? I think they're afraid of being separated. I knew it. Ellen, she's just a little girl. She'll get over it. And if she doesn't? We want to adopt Sarah very much, Mrs. Santana. But what have we gained if she just ends up resenting us because we've taken her away from her friend? 
I think it's just a shame you can't see your way clear to taking them both. Now, we've already discussed this, and it's out of the question. We have very limited resources, as it is. We want to give the child the very best of everything, but uh, there's just so much to go around. I understand. I think we better be going. Ellen? Boy, that's what I call a Scrooge. How can you put a price on little kids? It's not Mr. Potter's fault. I know how he feels. There's more to it than just money. It's a big responsibility. Let me ask you something. Why are those kids so close? I mean, they're not even related. No, they are, Mr. Smith, they are. By tragedy. They were both orphaned as a result of accidents to their parents. They were both brought here to this facility on the very same day. All they had those first few weeks was each other. It's created a bond between them that I'm afraid it's unshakable. Well, good luck, Mrs. Santana. Thank you again very much. In addition to what you're doing in the house, I want you to go over the whole setup here, too. Give me your recommendations. You know, my office, the dressing room, the... Bill, we're ready for you. The TV interview's all set up. Come on. Excuse me. I gotta go be Mr. Wonderful for a couple minutes. You know, I would like to run an airplane, drop leaflets all over the country, telling everybody what this guy's really like. Oh, you think that's the real Bill Cassidy? I don't see anything to tell me any different. Maybe you just haven't looked hard enough. Bill, we're uh, ready for you now. We've got the TV interview all set up. Cut, 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 cut. Don't we look nice? Shut up, Gordy. Hey. Dan, how are you how are doing? You? It's good to see you. Yeah, how you are you? Right over here, you? Bill. Thanks. How you doing? So good to see yeah, you. Yeah, right over here. Why don't you sit in the middle? All right. Okay, with the kids on either side yeah. here, huh? Right over here next to Dad. That's great. Okay, smile. It was Martin. Martin. Come on, smile over here. There we go. Right in next to Dad. Let's smile now. Okay, that's fine. All right, now, Dan, everything all right? It's fine, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Let's make it. Okay, guys, you ready? Let's roll tape. Hi, this is Dan Beach for Hooray L.A., standing with Bill Cassidy and his family on the set of That's Our Dad. Let's go over and talk to him. Bill, how are you? Hi, Dan. We understand some big changes in store for the show next season. Well, we have decided to expand mm. a little bit. And I'm not talking about just one. I'm going to adopt two more children, a boy and a girl. We're starting to see people today. I'm sure they're going to be just as wonderful as these two are. Now, how do you kids feel about the new cast members? I don't know. Haven't met them yet. A little jealous, just like in a real family. Huh? <laughs> Bill, I guess the big question is here, uh, who are the lucky two that will get to say, that's our dad? We don't know. That's yet. us! Did you hear what he said? He wants a boy and a girl. Two kids out there that now we've really got to go see him. Come on! And nobody knows who it is yet. Excuse me, ma'am. Could you tell us where we can find Mr. Cassidy? I'm sorry, kids. The show doesn't tape until Friday night. Oh, no. We're here to see about the new kids he's going to adopt. Oh, that's different. You want casting. It's the first building there on the right. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Come on, it's got to be around here somewhere. Come on, you two. You're late. Mr. Cassidy's starting to see kids now. This is it. Over here. What's your name, honey? Sarah. Sarah what? Sarah Moore. OK. 
Okay, and who represents you? Represents? Who handles you? Who takes care of you? Miss Santana. And what about you, young man? I'm Joey Angelo, and Miss Santana takes care of me, too. Okay. Uh, take a seat over there, and Mr. Cassidy will see you in a little while. And I did a spunky rooster that's going to be on the air tomorrow. Fine. Thank you very much for uh, coming in. And I did a humongous burger and a Captain Sweetie that my mom has on cassette. Uh, that won't be necessary. We'll be having readings in about a week. We'll let you know. What about my pictures? What about my resumes? We what have it. No, we'll say? call you. Sorry about that. Boy. They're all so close to death. It's enough to drive you up the wall. They're robots, all of them. You push a button, they read you their resume. Two more, and you're out of here. Young man, you'll have to wait your turn. But we're a team. We don't do things without each other. I'm sorry, but you'll just have to wait outside. No, it's OK, Sally. What's the difference? Come on, kids. Come on, sit down. Maybe we should start with you. Why do you want to be part of my family? Well, it would mostly be so me and Joey wouldn't be separated. You see, a while ago, my mom and dad were in an accident in a car, and they died so... Sarah, I think Mr. Cassidy wants to hear more about your... No, no, it's, it's, it's okay. Let her continue. Well, anyway, they took me to Hogill Orphanage, and that's where I met Joey. I lost my mom and dad, too. There was a fire where they worked, and... Well, anyway, I ended up at Oak Hill Orphanage the same day as Sarah did. You see, she's my best friend in the whole world. Then Mr. and Mrs. Potter wanted to take me home with them. But I didn't want to leave Joey behind. And then we heard that you wanted to have two more kids. We just knew that it should be us. We're both really good in school, and we hardly ever forget our chores, and... We think you're the best dad in the whole world. They're perfect. I want them both. Congratulations. We'll be in touch with uh, Mrs. Santana to make the deal. Whoa. Joey, whoa, what's going on? What are, what are you doing here? Mr. Smith, he picked us. He picked us. I knew he would. I just knew it. What are you talking about? He said we're perfect. He wants us. Who? Mr. Cassidy. He's going to adopt us both. I don't believe you. Look, I know how you feel, Joey, but I'm not lying to you. It's all just a misunderstanding. He said he wanted us. He wouldn't lie. He hates lies. The only time he ever gets mad is when his kids lie. You're talking about the TV show again. He's an actor. Don't you understand that? No, he's our dad. You can even ask him yourself. All right, that's what we'll do. We'll go ask him. You brought them here? Yes. Why? Because they wanted to see their new home. They think you want to adopt them. <laughs> well, I do. I already told them they got the parts. No, no, no. I mean for real. What? They think you want to adopt them for real. Look, Mr. Smith, those two kids came into my office with the slickest audition material I've ever heard. They got one smart manager, I can tell you that. Mr. Cassidy, those children wouldn't even know what a manager is. They're orphans. 
What? They're orphans. They ran away from the Oak Hill Orphanage. Wait a minute. You mean all that business about them losing their folks? It wasn't an audition. That was their lives they were talking about. Well, uh... <laughs> Sorry about the mix-up. What do you want me to do about it? Just tell them the truth. Um... Oh, wait a minute. Why didn't wait? Now, look. I didn't... I didn't make this mess. I mean, I didn't create it. Why should I have to be the one to fix it? Because they'll believe anything you tell them. They trust you. They think you have all the answers. Wait, wait what do you mean, trust me? They don't know me. Well, they think they do, along with 50 million other people in this country. <laughs> Forget it, okay? You handle it. I don't do very well with kids. I never have. How I ended up with a show, I'll never know. But what would the character on your show do? Look, Mr. Smith, I hired you and your associate to design a security system for me, not to nose around in my private life. Joey, I asked you to wait in the hall. I'm sorry. I made some cocoa. I thought Mr. Cassie would like to have some. No, I, I, I don't want any cocoa. It's awful good. I made it just the way you like it on TV. I hate cocoa. I told you, I didn't want it. All right, look, I guess we better just get this straightened out right here. All right. Um, kid, this whole thing has been a misunderstanding. What do you mean? What I just said. Look, um, I thought that you two were just a couple actors reading for a part. Um, uh, look, I mean, what would I want to adopt any kids for? I live alone. I, I like it that way. Hey, I don't even like kids. But on TV... You would just forget about the TV, will you? Can't you get it straight? I am not the person I play on the TV. I don't like Coco. I don't like kids. And I don't know all the answers. Now, will you just get him out of here? No, you are. You're a big fake, that's what. I used to love that person you were on TV, but not anymore. I'm glad you're not going to be my dad. Stop crying. Poor little things. They were so sure that... I know. I might as well call the Potters, tell them to look elsewhere. Sarah doesn't even want to see them again. The bond between those two seems stronger than ever. Any chance the Potters will change their mind and take them both? No. I have tried. And the older those children get, the harder it will be to find them a home. Mr. Smith. Joey said you told him you were an angel. Well, Mr. Angel, why don't you do something? I'm trying, Mr. Santana. Believe me, I'm trying. Mrs. Potter? Uh, yes. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you.
Oh, I'm it. I just got word from the boss. Joey's run away again. Oh, no. Yeah. Look, I'll be a few minutes. Why don't you get dressed? We'll meet you out by the car. We? Yeah, I hope we. He is really tough working with a guy who never sleeps. <sighs> Miss Cassidy? Mr. Cassidy? Smith. I must have fallen asleep. Four o'clock. What are you doing in my house at four o'clock in the morning? It's about that little boy, Joey. He's run away again. So he's, he's run away again. It's not my problem. He's a human being in trouble. Doesn't that make it your problem? No. Well, I think it does. And whether you like it or not, you're the reason those children ran away in the first place. You know, you, you've got a lot of nerve. Talking to me like a social worker that I got to answer to. You don't have to answer to me, Mr. Cassidy. I'm sorry I bothered you. Well, you, you think the boy's right, that I don't care about anyone. Do you? I did once. You know, this kid talks about wanting a father. Well, maybe you ought to know about my father, what happened to him. He was the most important. <laughs> it was the only thing in my world. My mother died when I was two. And after that, you know, Dad and I, we did everything together. We went everywhere together. I loved him so very much. I depended on him to be there. You know what happened? He died. He went into this little place. He, he liked to have lunch. He liked their soup. And he sat down, he ordered a bowl. He took a taste. The next minute, he was dead. Acute heart occlusion. How is a kid supposed to understand what that is? See, I promised myself that I was never going to put any child of mine through that pain. And that's why I never was married. That's why I never had any kids. It seemed to me to be the best way to make sure that I kept my word. Somebody once said a man who has no more problems to solve is out of the game. Well, I'm just, I'm in that game. I just play by a different set of rules, that's all. Come on, you can't shelter little children from all the pain there is in this world. If you did, how could they ever appreciate all the good feelings there are? Safer. And lonelier. Yeah, well, I know all about loneliness, Mr. Smith. I was bounced around to all my aunts and uncles when I was growing up. Then I think you above everybody else would understand what that little boy's going through right now. Well, where do you think the kid might have gone? I guess back to his dream. What? His dream. He'll make believe house. Just take me a couple of seconds to get dressed.
Joey? What are you doing here? Just came here to talk to you. I didn't take anything. I know that. What are you doing here? I just figured I'd get some rest before moving on. You know? Where you headed? I'm... I'm not sure yet. What about, uh... the little girl, Sarah? You just... leaving her behind? Yeah. It was no good my being with her. She had folks that wanted to adopt her, but she wouldn't go with them because of me. How do you know that she's going to go with them now? Because I know. I left her a note. What did it say? You wouldn't understand. Well, why wouldn't I? Because you need to love somebody to understand. You know, you're not the only person in the world who ever lost somebody that they loved. I told her that if she loved me, she'd go with the Potters, and that I was going to be fine. My running away would all be for nothing if she didn't let him adopt her. Your friend's awfully lucky to have someone who loves her like you do. You're crying, just like you do on TV. No. It's not the way I do it on TV. Believe me. It's not the way I do it on TV. you need? You need somebody to adopt the both of you. Somebody like me. What? What do you say you and Sarah come and live with me for a while? And we'll see if we can get along together. I'm gonna warn you. I'm not the easiest guy in the world to live with. Maybe you can show me how to be a little more like that guy on TV. What do you say? I say. Yes. Yes. Okay, girls, come on, let's start breakfast. And I'll be down in a minute, please. Sarah? Him. We will. But whether we do or not won't change what's in that letter. Don't you see? Joy knows the best place for you is with the Potters. He knows that's what's best for you. But I'll never see him again. Oh, Sarah, how do you know that? I don't want to leave without him. I know. But, honey, 
We can't always have everything we want in this world. Joey understands that now. You must understand it too. It's what Joey wants. So why don't we go down and have some breakfast and call the potters. Joey told me you were an angel. I, I told him there was no such thing. I guess I was wrong. Listen, where did he learn how to make cocoa like that? That's what I don't understand. Can you tell me what he learned how to do? And by the way, we left the plans and some recommendations for you in the library. Thanks for everything. You two take care of this fellow, right? We will. Yeah, my mom once told me you have to get a hug a day to be happy. Joey and I think that's why he's been such a grunt. <laughs> oh, give me my hug. <laughs> you take care. Hey, what about the TV show? Gonna give these kids a chance to act? Not a chance. These two are mine. Ha, ha, ha. 